what up what up happy snow day to whoever's in the northeast um congratulations you have off of worker school so you get to do nothing bullshit play your xbox playstation whatever drink your wine like me um so we're gonna talk about eagles free agency and i'm gonna do my mock draft for the post combine and the early free agency period um and it's, it's definitely slightly different um, I wrote some things down. Boom. Um, I'm serious, but I'm not really serious about this. So, um, if we don't get anybody on this list, am I going to be a little heartbroken? Of course, just a little heartbroken, but I'm not going to be like, wow, really guys? As long as we get impact players, that's all I care about. So, Let's talk free agency. Kind of Barwin, he had to go. I'm sorry. Great guy, great teammate, awesome. Um, but we needed the money. We need the money. Um, who else did we cut? Chase Daniel. Everybody's been talking about this. Yes, it was a ridiculous contract. However, we had Sam Bradford last year, guys. We didn't even know we were going to get Carson Wentz. We didn't know we were going to get any top corner quarterback. So. He was like our backup plan. If Sam Bradford got hurt, you're basically paying Chase Daniel to be your starter. However, we ended up trading up to get Carson Wentz. We got Wentz. We traded away Bradford, got a first round pick, and Wentz started and excelled. Sure that he had, you know, some rookie things going on first year, but overall it was it was an an astounding rookie season, much better than Sam Bradford did here um even though Bradford had the stats it, it didn't it didn't mean anything because we didn't go to the playoffs like you're almost well you're 27 28 years old and all you can do is take us to a measly 7 9 record forgot here so um and we saved a million dollars yes it was dead money seven millions in dead money but whatever contract he signs we get that cap back probably next year so mm, it was necessary for Carson Wentz development in the first year. And now we have Folsey back. Woo -woo. And um, he'll help Wentz excel because he's actually started. He's been a quarterback in Philadelphia and he's won games. Um, and he's been to the playoffs. Last time I remember, Foles had to lead when he left the field against the Saints in the playoffs. Thank you, defense, for fucking that one up. Um... But I, I, I digress. I'm not going to nitpick. That was how long ago. So, uh, who else? Who else? Uh, Leo's McKelvin. <laughs> Enough said. Um, we haven't done that many moves. But what we have done have been um, decisive moves that have been impactful moves. Um, Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, that's a number one wide receiver. He's on a prove it deal. Uh, he's going to want to put up big numbers. He's going to want to excel and stay healthy. And we have a good sports science program. So hopefully he, you know, dives into that and he stays healthy and produces for us. And that's what we need. Um, Tory Smith, he's solid. He's just going to be that, a good go-to guy with speed, you know, to take some attention off of everybody else. Jordan Matthews, I don't know why people keep giving him shit. He's productive. He's... I mean, he's had how many different quarterbacks and still produces. No, he's not the number one wide receiver that we need, but he's a great wide receiver, no less. Um, and in order, and he has 225 receptions or something like that. Like, he has Michael Vick, Nick Foles, Mark Sanchez, Sam Bradford, Carson Wentz throwing him the ball in his first three seasons. Just three. Calm down, guys. Um, so, um, one thing I do really hope we do in regards to free agency is add a veteran cornerback. And it doesn't even have to be somebody old. Um, I would love for the Eagles to trade for Kyle Fuller from the Bears. Um, he's still young. Had a great rookie season. New regime in. Um, he would be cheap. And he fits the system. He's good in coverage. Um, big, tall, fast. So, it works. I wanted us to draft him when he came out, but the Bears snagged him, and we got Marcus Smith. 
hopefully he has a breakout year. Last year he came on pretty well, so. Um, so. <clears throat> In regards to all that, yes, the tap, the cap is tight. Howie Roseman knows what he's doing. He's making moves. Be patient. I mean, we didn't do anything in the um the tam legal tampering period and then all of a sudden we sign out Sean Jeffrey. So it's like relax, be patient. Um it's gonna happen. It's he they know what they're doing. Douglas and Howie, they're a good combo together. So let's get into this mock draft. Um a lot of you guys are probably not gonna like this mock draft. You're probably gonna be like she don't know what she's talking about. That's stupid. Why would you do that? I I I see things differently. Um, I try to see things in a bigger picture, and um, I don't just see things as like a one year fix. Free agency is not a one year fix. We sign literally, sign guys basically to one year deals um, for them to prove it. But that doesn't mean any of them are here long term. So that's what we need to think about in this entire draft long term. So, first round, <clears throat> my pick, now the popular pick, is Marlon Humphrey, which I agree with. That is a great pick, but that's not my pick. <laughs> my pick is John Ross, and I say this because this offseason is about improving uh, the offense and giving Wentz the weapons he needs to succeed and develop into an elite quarterback we know he can be. Um... Now, there are a lot of cornerbacks in this draft. There are cornerbacks going to be drafted in the second and third rounds who usually would be, like, first and second rounders. So, um, I don't think we necessarily have to draft a cornerback in the first round. And if Sidney Jones was there, um, I definitely would have drafted him, um, no doubt. Yeah, I would have been salty about John Ross, but, I mean, Sidney Jones would have been everything we embodied in a cornerback, and he would have been the number one day one starter so um yeah John Ross I mean he can grow with ones he's young yes he has a lot of injury history but he doesn't have to come in and start right away he can kick do kickoffs he can do punt returns offense um he he can do many things in offense as well he doesn't have to be slants and you know short routes he can go deep he can do the screen bubble he can do the end around jet sweep he can he can do those type of things so he's like a multi weapon like multi-use weapon um kind of like a Tyree kill without the off the the um off field concerns and if he didn't have the injury history he would be for at 14 like nobody would have any doubt and I don't have any doubt and he ran a 4-2-2 with a torn labrum. He came back from a torn meniscus and both knees and all these other injuries. Like, And he still runs a 4-2-2 and put up 1,700 yards. Or 1,300 yards or whatever it was. 17 touchdowns. Like, come on. That type of stuff, you can't just bread in anybody. Um, so, <clears throat> with that being said, Eagles stay at 14. We pick John Ross. Now, here's where things get interesting. Round two, we pick Cordray Tankersley, and a lot of people have teased Tabor. Yeah, mm, I don't like his 40 time. Yes, he's an aggressive corner, but I just, I don't like his 40 or his bench. Like, he's weak and he's slow, but he's aggressive. Like, okay, we already have that. Jalen Mills, <laughs> he's slow, but he's not necessarily weak, but he's slower, and I don't want that. That's that's not the type of cornerback I would want. Now, would I be mad if the Eagles drafted him in the second round? No. Ideally, I would draft Tankersley over him. And if he's available, I'm grabbing him. 6'1", 199, runs a 4'4", excellent ball skills. It matches. He's He would be a, a starter day one. Um, round three, if, if this guy makes it round three, no hesitation, you pick him. Tano passing on defensive lineman from Villanova. I love this guy. He's been in all of my mock drafts. I love this guy. 6'7, 289. And I believe he ran a 4'7840 or 488 or something like that. But whoa. 
Now, Benny Logan going to Kansas City. We need a guy next to Fletcher Cox. Yes, we have Bo Allen, Destiny Vial. But this guy, he can move. He can probably be all along the defensive line. But if you put him next to Cox, oh, Lord. It could be dangerous, y'all. And he could develop into, they say he could be a Calais Campbell type guy. I'll take that any day. I mean, he's 31 and just got, what, 50 million or something from Jacksonville? Like, I'll take that. Um, now, the Eagles have two fourth-round picks. Now, I already said that we traded away our fifth rounder for Kyle Fuller. So, we have two fourth-round picks, a sixth and a seventh left. I choose, um, as our first fourth-round pick, the one we originally have would be Demonte Kazee, and we've already spoken to him at, like, the senior bowl, I believe, in uh, the combine. 5'10", 185, I'm sorry. Uh, he ran a 4'5", 40. That's not bad. He's, he could be a corner, uh, slot cornerback, and um, and he doesn't even have to start right away because we have Mills, and we would, hopefully, we would have Kyle Fuller, and then we'd have Tankersley, so that's already three cornerbacks, and then he could be like the extra guy. Um, and we need more cornerbacks. We don't we don't really have any. Um, and he, he would definitely be worth the pick in the fourth round. I mean, we just, we don't have any cornerbacks. <laughs> that is the, the motto here. The, the lesson, the basis of this storyline. We have no cornerbacks. Um, and then our second fourth round pick, which would be awarded from the Browns, the comp pick, would be Jamal Williams. Um, now, some people, fans, are like, we need Dalvin Cook, and we need all these other guys. I, I see the Eagles getting a bigger guy, a stronger guy, a guy who can be that Ryan Matthews for us, because we have Sproles, you got Byron Marshall, you got Terrell Watson, he's probably not going to be on there next year, but, and then you got Smallwood. And we got a, a lot of small scat backs, but we don't have anybody who can punch it through the goal line and that's what Jamal Williams is and he could be that three down back with Smallwood being the complimentary uh Brian Westbrook type of back that we need so and Sproles is going to be going after 2017 so we need more we need more and we need our number one and Jamal Williams he ran a 4.59 but I mean LaShawn McCoy he ran a 4.58 so he that's not that's nothing he can he's strong uh, he's got great vision, and that's what we need. We need somebody to get to the hole, get through it, punch through, break some tackles, and get some yardage. And that's what we need. So he would be perfect for us. And in the fourth round, that's like tremendous value for this guy. Tremendous, um, in my opinion. So moving on. Sixth round, we pick um, Alex Anzalone. Now, I just picked this guy randomly because we just brought him in for a visit. We need a linebacker, and I think... Whoever we bring in for visits, we're going to draft. We've done that since Chip Kelly. And, and I mean, honestly, whoever we bring in for visits, we draft these guys. We bring in, like, what, 50, 60 guys. We, we're going to draft somebody that we bring in. So, um, y'all look out for whoever we bring in because some of those guys are coming home. Um, and then round seven, usually I have Jeremy Clark, but I think he could probably make it to um, – undrafted free agent and if he does i'm pretty sure we will be one of the first ones calling because uh yeah he's he's just ridiculous but in the seventh round we pick dan skipper now he is completely random i just um did some math and looked up who will be closest to what we would pick and he's a, a tackle in the seventh round and um i just looked up what the number closest to what we would pick and he's a 6 10 y'all I was like holy crap if that's not like that's perfect 6 10 he ran a 5 4 2 he's developmental um they say his height he gives away you know some power and strength to other guys with his height but I mean he's developmental if you put him on a practice squad he perfects his technique you move him up after Jason Kelsey I mean uh, Jason Peters retires you move Lane Johnson over you got Vita you got him you got Dylan Gordon that's tackle death right there you don't need any more um and he'd be perfect it's the seventh round that's when you take flyers on guys 
Um, now, this, I'm not saying this draft is what we will draft, what we should draft. Um, well, it's kind of sort of what we should draft, but I'm saying, like, this is what I envision kind of the guys that we're looking for and the type of draft we'll have. Um, hopefully, you know, how he agrees and the draft plays out this way and we can nab some of these guys because we really need playmakers at all levels of offense and defense. In the event that the Eagles do not exchange a pick for Kyle Fuller, my draft will obviously change. Um, but I'm really hoping we do because he would definitely be worth a fifth round pick. A starter for a fifth round pick. Hello, that's Darren Sproles right there. Thank you, Saints. Um, and we already know the impact he's had. So, yeah, that's my Philadelphia Eagles Avenue. So, hopefully, um, you know, the draft plays out and we get some good guys. And Howie and Joe Douglas are really smart. Um, of course, this, this might change. You know, in the next month, and some change because shit happens. But um, I would say this is a pretty solid draft, in my opinion. And I hope you guys give me some good feedback. Um, hope you enjoyed the videos. And um, I'm just excited for the draft. I can't wait for these pro days and the visits and um, all the rumors. And we need to do some more trades, some more cuts. And um, it's going to be happening, so... Um, I'm not going to be making a video after every single thing we do. I'll probably do one or two a week, um, because I got a lot going on right now. Um, it's a busy month, but stay tuned. Eagles are always doing shit in the off season. It's, it wouldn't be a roller coaster ride if we weren't making splashes in the off season. So, Burke gang out. Enjoy your snow day, y'all. Peace.